Hey everyone, in this video we're going to compute this limit. It's the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of 6x over the sine of 7x. So to do this problem, uh, we need to use uh, a fact from calculus. So we need to use the fact that the limit, okay, as x approaches zero of the sine x over x is equal to one. So we're gonna use this limit in order to compute this one. Okay, so let's go through it very carefully. I'm gonna go really slow. So this is equal to the limit. It's not hard, but it's clever. As x approaches zero. So we have sine six x, but we really want it to be something like this, right? Like if you had, if we had sine six x over six x, and we took the limit, we could say that this is equal to one. And the reason is, when x approaches zero, 6x approaches zero, and 6x approaches zero at the same exact rate, so these match. Whenever these match, and this is going to zero, you're gonna get one. So the idea here is to write sine 6x, and then just put a 6x there on the bottom, right? Just put it there. You say, well, you can't do that. Well, sure you can, right? You can do whatever you want, as long as you make it better, right? So I'm gonna put a 6x here, right? So they cancel, see that? It's beautiful. This is all divided by, then you do the same thing with this one, right? Sine 7x. And so you want a 7x down there, right? You want to put that there. So what you do is you just put it there, right? 7x. Then you just put it there, right? 7x. Beautiful stuff, right? So again, look, oh, we didn't do anything, right? And now the x's will cancel. You can pull out the 6 sevenths. So this is 6 over 7. Limit as x approaches 0. And then we have, I'm gonna write it one more time, sine of 6x over 6x over, and then here we have sine of 7x over 7x, so sine of 7x over 7x, right? Works out really nice. We know that this limit is gonna be one, this limit is gonna be one, so this is equal to 6 sevenths times one over one. Six times one is gonna be six, 7 times 1 is 7. So you can see right away the answer is 6 sevenths, right? 6 over 7 will always work, right? Put a 5 here and a 2 here, it'll be 5 over 2. But the point is to, to show the work uh, in an elegant way. Another way to do this is to use something called L'Hopital's rule. Um, let's go ahead and do it that way. Why not? Uh, I'm just going to erase this and let's do it another way. I wasn't planning on doing it, but like it just occurred to me like right now. So why not? We got this. So L'Hopital's rule requires more knowledge, right? So typically when people see this in a Calculus 1 course, they don't know about derivatives yet, and they don't know about the chain rule. So if you don't know derivatives, this might not make so much sense. So the derivative of sine is, oh, oh. So if you plug in zero, <laughs> you get sine zero over sine zero. So that's gonna be zero over zero. So that's called an indeterminate form. So whenever you have infinity over infinity or negative infinity over infinity or vice versa or zero over zero, which is what we have, you have what's called an indeterminate form and then you can use L'Hopital's in that specific case. There's other indeterminate forms, but this is a specific one that allows you to use this rule. So how does it work? Well, what you do is you write the limit down and then you just take the derivative, right? So uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. So here it's sine of 6x, so it'll be cosine of 6x. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 6x is 6. That's the chain rule, right? It's the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside function all over, and then cosine 7x, same thing, right? Derivative of sine is cosine. Here it's sine of 7x, so it's cosine of 7x times the derivative of the inside, which is 7. So now you can plug in the zero, right? That's one of the rules from calculus, right? Like if you can plug it in and it works, you just do it. Um, it has to do with continuity, by the way. That's the reason that you can plug those numbers in. So plugging it in, we drop the limit sign. So I'll put the 6 in the front. So we get 6 cosine of 0 over 7 cosine of 0 
Cosine of zero is one, right? So this will be six times one over seven times one. So this is just six over seven, and that is the answer. So two ways to do it. The first way requires this limit. The second way requires uh, L'Hopital's rule. So I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some calculus. Uh, until next time, take care.